Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to rig hair in Live 2D. First things first, I'm going to be covering rigging on angle X, and I'm going to be showing you a simple versus complex way of setting up this hair. Let's start off by looking at our simple method. We're going to go ahead and hide everything but our front bangs here, and we're going to make a new deformer on the bangs. I'm going to call this bangs XY, since we're deforming on X here. And we're going to want to make three keyforms on angle X. Let's go ahead and set up the left side here first. What we're going to want to do is pull this deformer over until it's in front of the face. Now you'll notice that I'm mostly using the middle and bottom parts of the deformer. The reason is we don't want the top to move too much. You're also going to need to pull in the side here. What I also like to do is push this top green part just to give it a bit more volume. Let's see how this looks. Once we're happy with it, we can go into the burger menu here and select reflect motion. Reflect horizontally and press OK. This is going to reflect it over so we only need to set up one side. Let's go ahead and get our side bangs back here. And we're going to have a deformer each for either side. Similar to our bangs, I just called these side bang left XY and right XY. And we're also going to need three keyforms on angle X for these two. Now you can set these up individually or you can select both using control click. We're going to set up the left side again. So for our left side, when our head turns, we want this left one to be pushed in a bit. You want this to become a lot smaller, but still be visible. And this side we also want to be pushed to the left, but become a little bit bigger. We're not going to be able to reflect motion on these because they're going to be set up differently either side. Let's go ahead and set up the right side exactly the same as this one. Okay, so that should be both sides set up now. Lastly, let's reveal our back hairs. And we're going to want to create two deformers for our strands here. We also need a deformer for our very back hair piece. So first, let's go ahead and set up our left and right hair back. Put three keyforms on angle X. Let's do the left side. So this is an example of a simple hair setup. We only have one strand to work with with the back hair here. So what we're going to do is stretch this out to give it the illusion that we have more hair at the back here. And you're going to want to do the same with the other side. Finally, we're going to grab our hair back deformer, put three keyforms on angle X. And what we're going to do is just push it away from the angle we're turning. So in this case, we're turning left, so we want this to go right a little. And this time you can reflect the motion, so do go ahead and do that. So now this should be our simple head setup. Next up, I'm going to be showing you a couple of tricks to make this a more complex setup, but it's going to look a lot better as a finished product. So we have the same setup as our simple head here, except I have removed the movement from our back hairs. First things first, I'm going to show you a trick with our side bangs here. What we're going to want to do is select all of them, including the deformers. We're going to copy. Control C and paste with Control V. This is going to make a copy of our bangs. We're going to want to move these below the face on our draw order here. So we shouldn't be able to see them quite yet because they're still layered on our side bangs. Let's quickly rename these to back so that we know what we're working with. So here's what we're going to do with these copied side bangs. When our head turns this way, you can see that there's a blank space where our bangs are kind of deforming awkwardly. What we're going to do is grab our side bang back on this side and we're going to pull this in here like this. 
to give it a bit more volume. Now you can see when our head turns, it looks like we have a bit more side bang at the back, but it's not interfering with the face. Let's do the same with the other side. There we go, much better. Next up, we're going to need to duplicate our back hairs. And I'm going to duplicate this twice. So we're going to control C and control V two times. And we're going to move our second set behind our first set. And what I'm also going to do for this demonstration is recolor these so it's easier to see which strands are which. So I should now have three layers of hair. What I'm also going to do to keep ourselves organized is name the back layers strand back and the front layers strand front. All right, now we're ready to set these up. Let's go ahead and turn our head again. What we're going to want to do first is select our strand front. This is going to be the strand that we're turning with. In this case, it's going to be our left side and we're going to shift this left, like so. We're also going to select our middle one and also shift this to the left so that they become a layer like this. As you can see, compared to the simple hair here, it looks like our hair has more layers. Let's do the same with the other side. There we go, it's all set up. So now if we compare the simple with the complex, you're going to see that the complex one looks like it has much more depth compared to our simple one. If you're looking to set up a complex hairstyle like this, you can also have your artist draw in extra hair layers. However, if you only have one or two layers to work with, you can always duplicate them like so in order to create more depth. Next up, I'm going to be showing you some ways to set up the hair physics. We're going to start off by looking at skinning here. Now, if you've seen any of my tail tutorials, you should already be familiar with skinning. However, if you're not, I'll show you how to set this up here. What we're going to want to do is select this rotation deformer creation tool and we're going to place rotations along our hair piece here and then we're going to select everything here go up to modeling skinning and then select skinning once that's done go back up to modeling and into our skinning menu again and then select generate parameters for rotation deformer we're going to call this hair physics skinning you can set the range of angle too. I usually just go with 45 and you're going to see that it's going to generate parameters for you. Next, let's go into the physics window. It's right at the very bottom of the modeling menu and we're going to need to add a new physics group. We're going to call this hair physics skinning. Leave the input preset blank. I'm going to use my hair preset, but I will show you my setup. We're going to go ahead and add angle X as our input. Make sure that it's set to effectiveness 100. And then go to the output settings tab. Here we will need to add our skinning parameters, except the very first one. It's not going to move very much at first. What we're going to need to do is increase the output. And then we should see it start to move. For this specific hair strand, I needed three pendulums. You can see my pendulum settings in the bottom left here. Feel free to change these numbers as you wish. However, this is how I usually set up my hair. Next up, I'm going to show you a skinning method with a blend shape to add a little bit more depth to your physics. However, there's something we're going to need to do first. Since we're using rotation deformers for our skinning, we can't put a deformer above these and interact with the art mesh. It's only going to interact with our rotations. I'm going to show you a way to merge down our rotations into warp deformers. We're going to go ahead and start at the bottom, select each strand, and just create a warp deformer above each one. Then starting from the bottom again, we select each rotation deformer, go up to modeling, deformer, and apply deformer to its child element. Now we have no rotation deformers, 
but our hair still functions as if it was skinned with rotations. What we're going to need to do is select all of our warps here, create a new deformer above this. We're going to call this hair blend and we're going to need to create a new parameter. I'm just going to call this hair blend, make sure the range is minus 30 to 30 and set this as a blend shape. Create three new keyforms. And what we're going to want to do is when this is left, we want to extend this out as if it was being stretched. And when it goes right, we want to squish it in. Let's go back up to our physics window. And at first the blend shape isn't on our output. So what we're going to want to do is add this in. Wiggle this around a little. And then increase the output. This is going to add our blend shape in. And as you can see it is now squishing and stretching. Next up, let's look at a non-skinning method of setting up the hair. First things first, we're going to need to create some new parameters here. We're going to call this hair physics x1. Make sure the range is minus 30 to 30. Once we've done that, we can right click this and replicate the parameter twice. Go back into edit and just change the number to x2 and x3. We're going to want to select our hair art mesh here and create a deform path. It should look a bit like this. And we're going to want to create three keyforms on our X3 parameter. Now this is going to be left and right. When our hair is swaying left, we want this side to come in like this. And right, we want it to go outwards like this. Next up, we're going to select our strand and create a deformer above it. And for this one, we want to create keyforms on both X1 and X2. We're going to set up X1 first. What we can do here is click and drag our mouse to select part of this box. We're going to go up to modeling, temporary deform tool and rotation. Put this at the top of your hair and we're going to deform this outwards as if the hair is swinging. You should also be able to reflect this. For our X2, I want to add a few more points here. So I'm going to go to our number of conversion divisions and increase our height. So now you're going to see more of these points. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, but from a lower point on our hair strand. And once you're done, combine these parameters, select them and synthesize the corners. So it should work like this. We're going to go back up into our physics settings again. And this is going to use a similar physics setup to our skinning one. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this over into a no skinning group. And we're just going to change these parameters into our new ones. So now you can see it moving. It's moving a little much, so we're going to need to decrease the output here. So now the hair should work a lot better. And much like with our skinning, we can also add a blend shape to this just to give it a bit more depth. However, it's going to be a lot easier with this setup. All we need to do is add our new parameter. Make sure that blend shape is selected. We're going to want to select the deformer that we set up our hair physics X1 and X2 and create three keyforms on our blend. Similar to our previous one, we're just going to extend this out and then in. And then we'll need to add it to our physics group. Increase the output and you're going to see that it is now turning with the head. This does require some fine tuning. You may find yourself going back into the physics window and tweaking these blend shapes a bit to suit your head shape. And that is a basic look on how to set up hair in Live 2D. Now I didn't cover the Y angle in this video because it's a lot simpler than setting up the X angle. However, I will have a video upcoming in the next few months that will cover hair in a bit more depth. 
The file I was rigging today is also available as a free asset on my Ko-Fi store. The link to the download will be included in the description down below. If you're interested in more live 2D and VTubing related content, please do subscribe to the channel. An extra special thank you to my Ko-Fi members this month, including our super shiny treasure, Oksan. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I hope you have a wonderful day.